Hi children, here we are with our next chapter, Laws of Motion. In this video, we will be discussing about Newton's Laws of Motion. Newton's first law, second law and third law. You know children, Newton formulated his laws of motion as a continuation of Galileo's observations. So let us see all the three laws in detail. Newton's first law of motion. It states that every body continues to be in the state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line unless it is acted upon by an unbalanced external force. So we have a car over here and the car moves only when an unbalanced external force is applied on it. So any body continues to be in the state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line unless it is acted upon by an unbalanced external force. Now let's see another example. The ball which is at rest moves only when an external force is applied on that. When the boy kicked the ball, the ball moved. Now children, let's perform an experiment. Place a coin on top of the cardboard kept over a glass. Flick the cardboard suddenly. When you flick the cardboard, what did you see there? The coin which was at rest before the cardboard was pulled this falls back into the glass. When you pull the cardboard, the coin show the tendency to remain at rest. The coin doesn't move along with the cardboard, isn't it? It falls back into the glass. This tendency is known as inertia of rest. So what is inertia of rest? The tendency of a body to remain in its state of rest or its inability to change its state of rest by itself. And what is this inertia? It is the inability of a body to change its state of rest or uniform motion along a straight line by itself. Now let's see what happens when we are in a moving vehicle, whether it is a car or a bus and it stops suddenly. What happened? When we stop suddenly, we bump forward towards the steering. So to avoid this, first thing what we have to do is we have to wear seat belts, right? Now let's see what is happening in detail. Let's see what happens to the passenger who is sitting in a car or a bus which stops suddenly. If you are in the car and the car stops suddenly, you bump forward. Your upper part of the body goes and hits forward. And why is this so? A passenger sitting in a moving car is in motion. We are in the state of motion when we are sitting in a moving car. When the moving car stops suddenly, the passenger is pushed forward because of inertia. The lower part of the body comes to rest with the car, while the upper part tends to continue its motion due to inertia. Our upper part continues to be in motion, whereas the lower part of the body comes to rest along with the car. So don't you think children, seat belts play a very important role while you are driving a car? Always wear seat belts for your safety. Now let's see what happens when a vehicle starts suddenly. What happens? The upper part of the body is pushed back, isn't it? Now why does this happen? 
When a car starts suddenly, the passengers sitting inside tend to fall backwards. This is so because the lower part of his body starts moving along with the car. But the upper part tries to remain at rest due to inertia of rest. The lower part of the body will move along with the car. Whereas the upper part remains at rest. Children, let's see another example of inertia of motion. Here we have a girl running on a track. Was she able to stop herself at the finishing point? No. This is inertia of motion. So what is inertia of motion? It is the inability of a body to change its state of uniform motion along a straight line by itself. Now, you know what is inertia, right? It is the inability of a body to change its state of rest or uniform motion along a straight line by itself. Children, haven't you experienced the same thing? When you are on a running track and when you reach the finishing point, you are unable to stop yourself at the finishing point. Always, we move a little bit forward after the finishing point. That is, the inability of a body to change its state of uniform motion along a straight line by itself. That is what is inertia of motion. Now we know what is inertia of motion. Let's have an example over here. When you switch off the fan, the fan doesn't stop all of a sudden. It rotates a bit more and then stop. This is an example of inertia of motion. Now, riding a bicycle is a good example for this law of motion at work. Your bicycle is a mass. Your leg muscles pushing on the pedals of your bicycle is a force. So what does Newton's second law of motion says? It says that acceleration happens when a force acts on a mass. So what do we understand? According to Newton's second law of motion, force is equal to Ma, that means force is the product of mass and acceleration. Now let's see Newton's third law of motion. And what is it? For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Let's see an example. Here we have a person who is trying to come out of the boat. He is trying to land onto the shore from the boat. And see what happens when we try to come out of the boat, when we land out. The boat tends to move back. That means there is an equal and opposite reaction. Your action is you are trying to come out. Whereas the reaction is the boat is pushed back. Children, haven't you experienced this when you are trying to come out from a boat? When we try to come onto the shore from a boat, we always feel that the boat moves a bit backward and we tend to fall into the river or the sea, right? So there is an action and there is a reaction involved in this particular example. Now let's see another example. Here we have a balloon which is tied. What happens when you remove the string of the balloon? The balloon just moves up. The air in the balloon is pushed down, whereas the balloon rises up. That means there is an equal and opposite reaction. So the third law states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Yes, children, let's have some fun now. 
that is your homework part your assignment which i'll be giving through this video now you know all the three laws with examples isn't it according to newton's third law of motion we have an example that is a swimmer swimming forward is the best example for this right now what do you have to do is you have to guess what is the action and reaction involved here in this example please put your answer just down below in the comment section 